Motor fluctuations, it's, uh, I would say, a trauma for any physician that follows patients with Parkinson's disease. So I would say almost all patients yeah, at some stage in their disease progression will present motor fluctuations and we will use all drugs available to try to treat our patients the best, including levodopa. Uh, what it's amazing is that after you know, having levodopa for 60 years, we are still not knowing exactly what's the best way you know, to use it. So we don't know exactly what's the best starting dose, what's the best titration what's the best number of intakes per day. So there are very basic things regarding prescription habits that we don't know. On the other hand, we also don't know exactly what's the best strategy in terms of finding the best adjuvant treatment to levodopa for those patients who have motor fluctuations. So in some way, my first note is we are still many missing points, you know, for decades that we don't have the right answers. Uh, in, this, in, this, in this Congress, I have presented the data of a specific clinical trial it's a trial where we have compared a specific dose of opicapone, 50 milligrams, with 100 milligrams of levodopa for the treatment of patients with motor fluctuations. It's a very, I would say, very specific trial because it's a trial where the primary outcome, it, it's the levodopa pharmacokinetic in the plasma, so not having, you know, a clinical outcome as the primary, but we also have some clinical data as secondary outcomes. And in that trial, I would say the most interesting results is uh, when we compare opicapone 50 milligrams with uh, a, a dose of uh, adjuva, a dose of levodopa that is slightly lower compared with the arm where we are using the opicapone, uh, opicapone really increases the total levodopa exposure in a significant way. And with the curve regarding the ph pharmacokinetic that seems attractive in terms of reducing the risk of dyskinesia, and this is one of the problems we have when we use change the, the, the levodopa regime uh, trying to treat motor fluctuations and also we hope reducing the risk of, also of aggravating Parkinsonism and aggravating the off. So in some way that specific trial I think informed us that opicapone it's a good strategy as an adjuvant to levodopa for patients that have you know motor fluctuations at an early stage. The other interesting thing that was not the main goal of the trial but it's in some way it's a consequence of the analysis that we have performed is that probably the number of intakes of levodopa is also important in terms of the benefit that we, that we take from adding an adjuvant treatment, in this case of picapon. And, and for instance, probably five intakes a day, it's better than four intakes a day when we decide you know, to uh, use opicapone adjuvant to levodopa. Because the, the pharmacokinetic of levodopa is smoother, so we don't increase the Cmax, meaning we are not increasing the risk of dyskinesia, but we decrease uh, the depth of the truth of levodopa. So we reduce the risk of aggravating Parkinsonism and inducing off. So that's the other learning point that I think it's very interesting, but strange that we are still in a need to learn about things that, you know, we are using for the past 50 years. As I mentioned, this trial, the 203 trial, where we compared our pick -upon with uh, uh, two different regimes of levodopa added this information that is uh, clearly, you know, adding opicapone to levodopa uh, improves the, the peripheral levodopa exposure in a way that it seems to be better than just increasing the total daily dose of levodopa or increasing the, in, the single individual doses of a specific intake of levodopa. So in that sense, even if the trial was not a pragmatic clinical trial, was an exploratory trial using levodopa pharmacokinetics as the primary outcome, the data that was generated clearly, you know, uh, places opicabone as an interesting potential first adjuvant treatment for patients who have uh, probably less severe motor fluctuation. The fact that opicabone, uh, again, it's easy to be used, it's once in take a day, so there are other elements also that make that option, I would say, attractive for patients that are less severe than the ones that I think we are all already using opicapone.